everyone. It's Christine Stitch All The Things. Welcome to my channel today. If you're new, thank you so much for checking out my channel, spending some time with me today. And if you're returning, thank you so much for coming back and seeing what I've we've been up to this week. Today is Saturday, May 29th. The mister was going a little bit stir crazy for a while because he's excited to get into the house. We both are. But I spent most of the week stitching. I said last week that I was pulling out burlesque zombie portrait. So I have some stitching to share with you today. Some great progress. I've got some purchases to share with you today. And that's going to be weird because normally I get to talk about that when the mister's not around. But he is sitting directly across from me. So he gets to hear all about my purchases too. That's going to be fun. Uh, when you're in a motorhome, you don't get to hide your purchases or, you know, minimize your purchases. They get to see them. Just FYI, downside of the motorhome, right? The mister's just smiling at me. Your dollar a yard stuff? Is that what you mean? Yes, it's only a dollar a yard. Okay. Dollar a chart, too. Okay. Yeah, 25 cents a skein of floss. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> it's a good thing. Okay, uh, so I do have some purchases to share. And uh, so, yeah, let's get to it. So as far as stitching goes, I I didn't feel like stitching at all uh, on Saturday, Sunday, or Monday. I didn't do anything. And I kept thinking, oh, I'm just not in a place where I feel like stitching. I'm not going to get hardly anything done. And if you remember, I said that I wanted to get at least one row of my stitching done and possibly one and a half. I got two rows done and then a little bit started on um, two more squares here. So essentially uh, one of the rows was, what did I say? 10, 10 squares across. So I got a thousand stitches done and then I think this ended up being when I was counting like maybe 800 stitches. So 1800. So like 2000 stitches done. And basically I just spent the days all day stitching, like eight hours a day. It seems like I should have gotten more done. I would take breaks. It wasn't a solid eight hours, but I just spent the daytime stitching. I didn't do any sewing this week. I decided I wanted to work on her and I'm not showing you the full thing. And this is why. I'm going to show the chart. Yes, I know that's not okay to do, but there's no way, no way you guys are going to get this chart and be able to stitch it from this page because it's just no. Um, so this is the chart and this is how much I have left. This is how much I've stitched to like right here from here down to here. That's how much I have left to do. And I did blow that up a little. Um, I'm really excited. And so I told the mister, the mister and I have plans, y'all. Like I've said many times, life is adventure with my mister. And we have plans. I'm not really going to go into them right now because it's a little overwhelming. He actually sent me a calendar, a, like a, what was it? A screenshot or a PDF image of a calendar he created for us for the month of June. And the month of June and into July. And we are going to be doing tons of traveling. Okay, uh, maybe I will tell you some of our plans. This is like that meme. I just shared a meme on Facebook that said, I always say long story short and then give you the full, entirely detailed story. That is me. 1,000% every time. Long story short. Uh, so long story short, we're going to be traveling all what from when when we move in and get the house get the keys to the house we're going to go to Arizona and back and get stuff because we are 90 are we still around 95% or are we closer to 99% 95% 95 sure that we are just going to be having one house in Wyoming but we would be foolish to not spend the entire winter here first before we make that decision and before many of you comment because it's so funny. The mister and I get comments all the time on Facebook when we mention this. 
people think that because of how I've probably because of how I've spoken and how little I've been on that I have no idea what wintry weather's like or and I've even said I wasn't prepared for winter here uh, right now because it feels like a little bit wintry to us. Um, it's not that I've never lived in a wintry area before. That's how I know that I'm not a huge fan of like huge uh, bunches of snow all the time because I, ha I used to live 30 miles from the southern gate of Yosemite. I know what snow is like. Um, I've had winter clothes, but when I moved to Arizona, how long has it been now, honey? 11 years. 11 years ago. I got rid of all my winter stuff. And frankly, I never thought I would really acclimate to being in Arizona. I'm a highly adaptable person, but I just got rid of all my winter stuff after about a year or so of being in Arizona. I'm like, pfft, I'm only in flip-flops all the time. I don't like need winter clothes anymore, winter shoes. So we have to get some of that stuff. But I say all that because it's, it's amusing to me that at times that many people don't know that I actually have lived in a colder climate. I know what it's like. I know what we have to, to do to, to live in that kind of climate. I just don't have those things right now. But also, we're at a point where we get to decide, do, do we want to reacclimate? Do we want to be in this wintry climate? I mean, frankly, in Arizona during the summers, we hibernate. You stay in the house all the time um, with the air conditioning. So for us, a winter will be very much the same thing, except the extreme opposite. We stay inside all the time and stay warm with the heater. Um, so anyway... This is our, our thought is that we, we will, we're 95% sure we're going to want to just live in Wyoming. So long story short, uh, long story long, uh, we're going to go to Arizona and I'm going to, we're going to pack up stuff we know we need. And right now for me, number one priority is my craft room. I'm going to go get all my stuff and we're bringing it up. Uh, and also we need our pickup truck, which is why we're going to Arizona. Then we're going to go to Oregon, grab the stuff that we want to bring from there, see it, what we're going to do with the rest of it. If we eventually want to get, bring it all, all of it, or just, um, you know, give, give away to family, whatever, and then come back. And then we don't want to have the motorhome up here because we don't want it to be exposed to the winter elements, have to winterize it. So we have to take that back to Arizona and, and likely bring up another load of stuff um, before winter sets in. But we may get all of that done in the month between June and, and July. I think you estimated it would be about 30 days, giving us like a couple rest days in between the traveling back and forth. Okay. It's going to take us three, three driving days, two and a half driving days to Arizona, two nights, two and a half driving days to Arizona down, couple, two days there, and then same amount of driving back. And then I think it's three and a half driving days to Oregon. Yeah, because it's three nights. Um so, and I tell you all this life update stuff because that means my videoing and crafting stuff is going to go like from 2,000 stitches in a week to probably not at all. Um, so that's just your heads up for our month of June. We're excited, but while we know we're just sitting here waiting for the house, I kept, kept telling the mister, we need to enjoy Enjoy the calmness because it is very shortly not going to be very calm. Okay, so that was my stitching. Uh, and let me let me switch out my stuff here. I guess I'll just set that here on the table and put my put my book away. My burlesque zombie portrait, if you're brand new, comes from the book Twisted Stitches by Phil Davison. All right, so mail I got in was I noticed heartstring samplery ha had released for April and I didn't I didn't get it yet the April Sunday stitches uh, it is well with my soul this is m my absolute favorite hymn whenever I sing it I cry every single time uh, I saw the mayhem but 
that's not a, a hymn that I'm really familiar with. Probably only sang it a couple times growing up. So I didn't get the May one, but this, the April one, oh yes, absolutely. And if you know the story behind the song, the author of the song, it's just, it is a powerful, powerful hymn. And I, I just absolutely love it. And then uh, Heartstring Samplery's a, a Plant of Rapid Growth. I really love this um, patriotic theme. Liberty is a plant of rapid growth. Absolutely love that. So this is something I'd, I want to end up stitching um, for our guest bedroom because either our guest bedroom or the mister's office is going to be patriotic themed. And uh, I'll be talking about that in a minute. And so I've got some patriotic stitching that I'd, I'd like to, to get put in there. And that's one of them. And then this one, I just saw it and absolutely loved it when I was ordering the other two love and joy from October house that I just think is a sweet little Christmas Christmas stitch so all of these I got from the cottage needle on Etsy and she ships really really fast out of Medford Oregon um, Oregon so uh, got those really quickly uh, let's see okay fabrics <laughs> I mentioned a long time ago that I wanted to make a patriotic quilt for the mister's room with the American Gatherings Fat Quarter Bundle. And I say I, I mentioned this a long time ago because I pre-ordered this from the Fat Quarter Shop in September of 2020. And because of delays from fabric shops or fabric manufacturers and things overseas, it just arrived in the States earlier this week and so I finally got the fat quarter bundle and I really really love this now the plan was to use this fabric bundle um, which are creams reds and blues and use the Maker Valley Yankee Doodle Dandy quilt pattern but then I was looking at uh, the quilt pattern that the uh, primitive gatherings designed go with this fabric um, I forgot our flag stands for freedom I think is the pattern name and asked the mister which which pattern would you like better and he chose the our flag stands for freedom pattern and that pattern should be getting here on Tuesday so I will have all of the fabrics and the pattern to start making his quilt and I have the backing and the binding for this already it's in Havasu so I will be bringing that up when I go get my craft room so yeah, very excited. I ended up making a different pattern, uh, a different quilt for his, his, it's in his office right now in Havasu because I intended to, if you remember, finish that quilt before my daughter came for Thanksgiving, but I didn't make it in time. So he's going to have two quilts for his room. Um, and, and that's a room that has a trundle bed. So the, the quilt I made will likely go on the trundle part. Okay, so I've been making plans for our our house here, and I decided I wanted to make a king-size quilt. I have intended on doing the, a king-size quilt for our bed for a while, but just never really was motivated to get one done until this house. And I decided in our room, I want to make this a quilt out of the Bonnie and Camille Quilt B book. It's called the Legacy Quilt. Let me find it. Here it is. So I love Irish chain quilts and I love them when they have stars in them. So here's, here's the picture they have for this quilt. These are the blocks over here and that's, that's another picture. Let me show you the mock-up picture. I don't think it's a picture of the finished quilt. So the quilt shown here is, it's not a king size quilt. I have made notes, cutting notes, um, figured out how I want to make this quilt with the fabrics and things. <laughs> it, it, it took me a while to make sure, um, you know, calculate everything out, additional blocks. I'm essentially using double the blocks, double the blocks in this size quilt, which is, let me see, um, what size this is listed as. 
I know it's on here somewhere. Oh, 72 and a half by 72 and a half inch quilt here. And in my notes, I need to make it um, 102 inches by 92 inches, I believe. I'm, I'm going to have to check that. But, oh, yeah, king size bed is a 78 by 80 with a 12 inch drop on each side. So, yes, 102 inches by 92 inches. No. Something is wrong there. Or maybe something isn't wrong. No, that is right. That is right. Got it. Got it. Okay. So I, I have to double, double the amount of blocks needed. The, the fabric I was going to use for this quilt, and I don't think I mentioned it. I received the Sunday stroll fabric from Bonnie and Camille, a fat corridor bundle of it. And I left it in Havasu because I was like, I'm not making anything with this right now, but I will. Um, but I'm not doing it now. As I was doing my calculations, I'd realized I needed just a little bit more fabric from that bundle. So I ended up ordering a layer cake of, of the Sunday stroll fabrics. So these fabrics are really, there's, um, some grays in them. Um, aqua, uh, reds and pinks, and a tiny bit of blue navy in this fabric line. Now, if you know the Bonnie and Camille fabric lines, they're navies, dark grays, but mostly aquas, pinks, and reds are, are mainly the fabric fabrics used in that. And because Sunday Stroll has a little bit more gray and not quite as much navy, I was thinking all of their lines blend well together. They, they all work perfectly together. Um, sometimes they'll have the same prints, maybe in different sizes. So I went and I was looking for their other fabric lines to see what I could get, what had more of the aquas, more navies in them. And I realized that a lot of their lines, like Tula Pink, once they go out of print, they're out of print. You don't, you don't get them anymore. So there was a particular Etsy shop that was having a sale for the weekend, sale for the weekend. And so I was able to get some of their out of print lines for decent prices. And I ended up with a bundle of, which one is this? This one is, oh, I can't, little snippets. <laughs> so this one has more of the aquas pinks, reds, and this has grays, dark grays instead of blues. And oh, and green, of course. I missed I missed the green when I mentioned their line. My quilt, I want to have more aqua, some of the pinks, reds, the navy, and a touch of the grays. That, that's what I want. I don't want to put any of the greens in it. Then I, I got a little um, five inch square thing of smitten, which has a little bit of navy the aquas, threads, and then I found a layer cake of early bird. And I was able to get these all for like reasonable current prices. Um, the reason I got this, this is a fat eighth bundle is because the layer cakes for these, which normally are around like $38 you, is normally what you'd spend on a layer cake. Um, they're getting in the $50 range for just the layer cake. But the Fat Eighth bundle was $68, I think, um, and free shipping. And so I got that because the the price, that's a normal price for a Fat Eighth bundle for all those fabrics. And I wanted to get that before the prices got any higher because you can go and see some of the lines. The prices are just outrageously high. And then I got a bundle of Early Bird, which, which has more navy uh, and I'm going to be uh, and it does have some of the gray in the back or green too no that's not gray that's the green I'm sorry there's no gray in that one just green so I'm going to be taking pieces from all of the different fabrics to put in the in the quilt and using the colors that we like more take out the green maybe a touch of the gray, but mostly the navy red uh, and the aquas and probably a touch of the pinks. But now that I've got more of her, her previous lines, I can easily do that, mix and match and, and make this little quilt 
exactly how I want it um, with those colors instead. <laughs> trying to find it. So yeah, I'm excited to see how that comes together. Um, as far as the background fabric, her new line, their, their new line, Sunday Stroll, has a great white print. It's basically white with dots on it. And I'll see if I can, you can see that. So this is the background print I'm gonna gonna use. I need eight and a half yards of that print. So I have it in my Fat Quarter Shop cart, but I'm not gonna buy it yet because I'm not gonna be making any of these quilts until after we get settled. So sometime after July, and I've got my whole craft room with me. Okay, so that's it. Uh, I talked way too much about fabrics this week, but I'm very excited, very excited about all of these quilts and all of the plans I have to make quilts. I'm, I just want to make a bunch of quilts with all these, the Bonnie and Camille fabrics. Plus, if you've been paying attention to the shine on sampler quilt that I've been doing with the fat quarter shop, I have tons of that fabric left over and I get to make other little quilts, um, with that to, to coordinate with the main bed quilt. And I want to make some king size pillow shams and all that. I've got great plans, great intentions, I should say, because sometimes my plans just, they don't come to fruition. So at this moment, great intentions. Uh, so let's get to the giveaways. I have drawn winners already because of my phone issue. Uh, so let me show you the patterns and we'll talk about who won. All right. So I redrew a winner for Sleepy Hollow. So I will have up somewhere around here as I show the chart, I will um, put the screenshot of the person who won. And this one was Char J57. Um, I hope I, I hope, I don't know if it's a soft CH or a hard CH, um, but you won Sleepy Hollow. Send me an email with your address, christine.stitchallthethings at gmail.com, and I can pop your chart in the mail to you. Uh, that was a previous chart uh, from a while ago. I've, I've called that the original winner like three three times, so um, it is I, I had to redraw. Okay, so last week's Stitchy Update was for the June Lizzie Kate Flip It chart from the Lori V box. And the winner for that was Tammy, Tammy Pugh. So I have, um, I don't know if I have your address. I know we chat on email, but I, if I don't have your address, would you send that to me? I, I just didn't check my email before I, I um, started the video. Okay, the next one was, okay, this is all, these are the next four, I should say, are the winners from the Fat Quarter Shop New Products Drawing. So if you're interested in any of these charts that I'm sharing here, uh, check out that video. Um, let's see, it will have all the links in the description box. And I should take this opportunity to say, if you're new to my channel, everything I show, if there's a link to it, I will, I will either at least leave the name and let you Google and decide where you want to purchase it. Or if I purchased it from a particular place, I will always have links to it. So like all the fabrics, I will have links to every, the shop, uh, to where I got those specific items. Same thing with the charts, all that stuff. Just check the description box. Um, so the winner of the number, what was this? Number 10 chart from the Prim Stitch series, Love and Friendship. That was Marsha Laycock. So you won this chart. Congratulations. Congratulations to all the winners. I get a little focus and sometimes I forget to tell you that. The winner of Fresh Cut Cross Stitch Pattern is Catherine. Okay, Catherine, I think we've had an email exchange about your last name. Maybe, I don't know. I can't remember, but steel styly style. I, I couldn't find it. I actually looked to see, um, if you had told me how to pronounce your name and, and maybe I deleted it. I can't, I'm sorry, but you won the fresh cut chart. So if you will send me an email as well, I can get your chart out in the mail to you. Congratulations. And I'm sorry for messing up your name. Uh, 
And the winner of the Peppermint Lane chart is Mary Nelson. Congratulations, Mary, a fellow Arizonan. That's such a super cute chart. I just love it. Uh, and if you, I, I think you're still in the same location. You can send me an email if you like, um, but I, I, uh, if you've moved, but otherwise I will just send it to the email I have for you. Uh, and then the On a Winter's Day winner is Kristen Liska. So congratulations, Krista. Kristen, I think I still have an address for you, but uh, I'll check my email. If not, I know, I know where to find you. Um, so that's it. That's all the winners. Oh, I forgot to get a chart for this week. I knew I was forgetting something. Hold please. Okay. So I am back. Um, whiskey has joined me. Cooper will not come. He does not want to be on camera. Oh, he, he's giving me some side eye right now. And I don't know why I didn't do anything. Um, <laughs> the mister's pointing at him to come to me. He won't. He came over here and then Whiskey jumped up and Cooper just walked away. Um, hi. So you get to see Whiskey. He, they both desperately need um, haircuts. Uh, we just haven't found a groomer here yet. Okay, so giveaways. I have two this this uh, week. We're going to do another June flip it. Different June, I think. I think this is it. I already put away the other charts. So uh, this is cute with the watermelon and the sunflower. So this week, um, just use... Mm, what, what should I do for June for this week? Oh, just sunflower. Tell me if you like sunflowers or not. That's what I want to know. Do you like sunflowers? And then also this cute chart uh, from Bank Creek called Buzz. Buzz. Uh, that's super cute. And it definitely seems like a perfect chart as summer draws close, right? So these are the two. You can enter for either one. Don't say giveaway in the comments. Anyone from anywhere in the world can enter that I can mail to. Um... You have to be 18 or older to give me your address and that's it. So that's it for the whole video. Honey, is there anything you'd like to say this week? <laughs> gas, anything nice? The gas for all of these trips is less than one trip with a U-Haul truck. Oh, I costs. should mention that. You're right. You're right. Because it sounds like ridiculous. Why would we go up back and forth? all these many times, why would we not just have someone move us? First of all, the motorhome, we're going to strip it down from everything in drawers. When we, when we get the house, I should tell you, all right, this is my long story longer. When we get the keys to the house, we're going to drive over and we're going to start unloading everything that's in the motorhome that is unnecessary. Uh, and there's a, as you know, because you saw in the video, there's tons of storage space in here down in the basement, what we call the basement, you, those bay doors that I had open and you could see all the way through. We're just going to cram this thing full of our, our furniture and stuff. And because we're just going back and forth, we can fill extra space like the dinette seats, the couch, because essentially we just need the two seats and we need our bed. Uh, but all the extra space we, we don't need. So I'm going to be filling up, filling up stuff here with that. Um, and then when we go to Oregon with our other furniture and stuff, we're going to, and fill up the back of our pickup, fill up, pick up bed, the inside of the pickup, because it's essentially just going to be towed behind us, uh, probably everything but the driver's seat. Uh, so it, it, the mister calculated out how much, to rent a, a U-Haul trailer, uh, not the trailer, a, a truck, um, to get everything. And it was outrageous, outrageously expensive. And so since we essentially have not a moving van, but we got lots of space to move stuff, we're using the motorhome. And the mister, the mister's always calculating out the best way, um, to do things, um, money wise and everything. And this is, this is the best way for us. Of course, I've told the mister that he needs to be careful because when he gets driving for long, long periods of time, it messes up his back. So he has to let me 
do the packing and the moving of the boxes. Do you see me, mister? Oh, <laughs> you should have seen the expression he gave me. <laughs> or not, because this is probably not safe for the camera. Um, yeah, I hope he lets me do a lot more of the, the share of work, because I know sitting in that seat doing a lot of this driving, it can be pretty tense, especially with some of the, the drivers on the road. They're crazy. And you can really get some tension built up knots in your shoulders and stuff. And I don't want him doing too much. But we don't have to do a lot of this as fast as, as we're planning on doing it. So if things end up being a little too much, we can just take a break. Take a couple weeks off. The last trip we could wait till September to do. But we tend to be like let's get it done kind of people. And, um, so we're, we'll see, I will keep you updated. Uh, I will try to do videos as we go along, but you will likely catch me in just like no makeup. And I know you guys don't even care hair thrown up in a ponytail in my exercise clothes on a work day. And I'll, I'll let you know what's going on. Um, I'll keep you guys in the loop. I do all the time. You guys, uh, if you're new and you're like, man, there's lots of life stuff here. That's not my kind of channel. I totally understand. I do jabber a lot. I do share lots of our life stuff that's happening. Um, and since I'm multi-craftual, you get, you get all the things. Unfortunately, you get everything that like flits across my head and I just kind of spill it out. Just comes out. That's how, that's how we roll around here. Thank you for joining me this week. I hope you have a wonderful day. Stitch all the things and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. I went and got Cooper and I made him be in the video with me. So Donna, uh, here's Cooper for you because I know you like to see the boys. You can tell he's being all pouty. Normally he's all, he's not like this. But he's all, <laughs> he's, he's not happy. Cooper. So yeah, here's Cooper. Say hi. Say hi, what you being like this for? <laughs>